Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a topic that we've covered a few different times, or rather just two different times in uh, different flavors. And that is how to authenticate or log in and sign up with Xano in Bubble. And the reason we're going to do that is because one of our users recently discovered uh, a more efficient way in Bubble to store that auth token and pass it on throughout your application. So shout out to Felix. Uh, thank you so much for figuring that out and hopefully all of you can uh, benefit uh, from that if you use Bubble. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, and just a quick note, I'll also cover how to do things like separate your user's data in a list view so your user is only seeing data that belongs to them and then how to go into uh, a detailed view from that list for more details on one of those list items. And lastly, uh, how to implement a logout feature in Bubble. So that'll all be covered over a couple videos here. Once again, let's dive in. On my screen, you can see I've set up a basic login page. I have an input for email, password, and a button. So what we'll need in Bubble, a few are in plugins. You probably already know this, but to connect to Xano, you need the API connector plugin. Go ahead and add a new API here. I'll just name it Xano. And let's go ahead and create an API call. Our first one will be login. We'll want to make sure that's a post, and we want to use that as an action instead of data because the user is actually logging in, right? So let's go to Xano here, and you can see I have the login endpoint on my screen. Uh, just a quick overview, I've set up a workspace here, pretty basic, but I have a user table with a couple different users, and then I have restaurants, and these are sort of uh, restaurants that these users have recorded as their favorite. There's a name description and their favorite dish at that restaurant. You can see that user ID belongs to a uh, specific user, right? So let's go back to our login endpoint, and go all the way back. I'll just jump to API here and hit login. So let's grab that endpoint URL now and come back to our API connector in Bubble and paste that in. And now we need to add that uh, JSON body. So if I just hit run and debug, I can simply get that JSON body uh, from the debugger in Xano, copy that, and I'll just paste that in. So now um, with Bubble and the API connector, we need to use these brackets for dynamic values. So we wanna put those right in between the quotation marks and we just wanna name that the same name as our key. So uh, email will be email there and password will be password. Um, so now we have this key and value here. We need to uncheck private. That allows us to use these values dynamically uh, in Bubble and we actually need to use real values here in our Xano database that would run this endpoint. So I'm gonna do michael at email.com and password one, two, three. And now I can go ahead and initialize this call. So those are real values in my database. I'll hit initialize call. And you can see where you are returned the auth token. I wanna to make sure to save that. Okay, so great. Now we have the login endpoint. So let's go back to our login page here. And we can either hit workflow here or double click on this button and hit start edit workflow. And now we'll create this workflow here on the front end, so on Bubble. So it says when the button's clicked, uh, let's go. So first thing we wanna do is if we go to our plugin, we see our Xano login. Remember we're using it as an action instead of as data on the plugin screen. Um, and now we get this pop-up here. So we have email, we have the hard-coded values and we use to initialize the call, but we wanna insert dynamic data now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I want the input emails and value there. So whatever the user inputs in that uh, email input, the value will be put in as the input. And same thing with password. Okay, great. So now that we're hitting that login endpoint, that's going to produce that authentication token, right? And so now, where do we wanna store that authentication token? So the previous couple of methods have included uh, sending it as a URL parameter and also using a third party local storage plugin to store that. But what we can do in Bubble actually is we can store this in the current user. Even though we're not using the Bubble database at all, uh, what this will do is it will actually store that uh, auth token as a cookie for our session. So if I go to data in Bubble here, and if you just hit create new field, see I already have one here, but you can just hit create new field. And I just na I had named mine auth token, and I did it as text. So if you do the same thing, you'll see something like that as a new field for your current user, right? 
But once again, we're not storing any user data in there. Uh, it's just going to be for the auth token to be stored as a cookie during the user session, okay? So let's go back to our workflow here. And so after login, what we wanna do is under account, we can go ahead and make changes to current user. And we can click this change another field button. I'll click here and I'll click auth token because that's what I named the field. And then it's gonna be equal to, and we'll say the result of step one, Xano's auth token, okay? So that will basically store that as the current user's thing in bubble uh, for the entirety of their session, okay? So very handy. Uh, it doesn't use a third party um, plugin. It doesn't put it in the URL parameter, um, but it's stored as a cookie. So very nifty trick. Once again, shout out to Felix for that. Um, so now that we've logged in, we've stored the auth token. Uh, what do we wanna do next? So we wanna navigate to a page. We wanna go into our application, right? So I'm gonna go ahead here uh, and click to add an action. We'll do navigation, we'll do go to page. And I'm gonna go to a details page. And that's all we need to do. So let's go back to our design and bubble here and go to our details page. So I have my favorite places. This is just gonna list those different restaurants uh, that belong to specific users. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to drag uh, just a repeating group in here. And before I go further in here, let's go back to Xano to actually look at what that endpoint would look like. So I have this query all restaurants and you'll notice I have authentication required. So if I run this, we actually need an auth token, right? To run it, we can't run it without being authenticated. Um, so with authentication on, what I'm gonna do to ensure that a user can only see the restaurants that belong to them, right? Their own favorite restaurants. In by custom query, what I have set up here is we have our restaurants dot our table reference to that user ID is equal to our authenticated user ID. And remember that user ID is stored in the auth token by Xano so we know exactly what user uh, is logged in. So that will filter out the results so that for example, if I just run this in Xano here, if I get this for user one, which is Michael, if I go ahead and run this, we can see we only get records back where user ID is equal to one, okay? So let's go ahead and add this endpoint uh, to our bubble plugin. So I'm just gonna copy that endpoint URL here. Let's go to plugins. And then I'm just going to add another API call here. And this will be, we'll say my uh, restaurants. Okay. And I can simply uh, paste in that endpoint URL. We're gonna use it as data. And now I need to add headers. And the way uh, the auth token is passed uh, in Xano, which Xano uses JWE tokens, which is an industry standard, is through the header. And it's in the method of authorization. And the value is bare and then the actual token. And let's also make sure to unselect private here, but we need to grab a token to actually initialize this call. We can do that in Xano very easily. You see how I selected that token in the debugger. So if I just select one here, I can hit this copy button here, come back in and put a space after bear and just paste in that token. Remember to unselect private so we can make that dynamic. And I'll just hit initialize call and you can see I'll get these fields back. We'll just make sure to hit save. Great. Okay, so back to our design here. So we have this repeating uh, list here of my favorite places. So the type of content here is going to be uh, my restaurant, right? That's the endpoint we just created uh, in the plugin. The data source, we're gonna get data from an external API. The API provider is gonna be my restaurants. And here you can see in the header, we have bear and that long token. So what we can do is we can simply insert dynamic data. And now we can just select current users auth token. Because remember, after in that workflow, after we did the login, we uh, stored that token as the current user's auth token field. Um, however, we also need to make sure, which is very important, before that token, we need the word bear. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in and make sure we just have a single space after bear and then that dynamic value for the current user's auth token. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. 
And now I can populate this uh, repeating list with some text here. So let's go ahead. I'm not the best at design here, but let's make this a little bigger. And we'll go ahead. And if I go edit me, I can insert dynamic data here. So actually pull data from that endpoint we're hitting. And I'll just say uh, current sales, my restaurant. And let's just do the name here. So we'll just display the name of my favorite places. And then later on, we can go ahead and do uh, the detailed view by actually clicking on one of those restaurants. But let's go ahead. Um, let's actually preview this to see if this all works. I'm going to go back to the index page. And let's preview this. So once bubble loads, we'll go ahead, we'll put michael at email.com and password one, two, three, and I'll hit let's go. And now you can see I get those three uh, favorite restaurants uh, for Michael. So I'm only getting the data that belongs to that user. Let's go ahead and do it for Joe and watch this uh, list of restaurants transform. So back on the login screen, if I do joe at email.com, and enter his password, which is password123, and hit let's go, we should see now a different unique list of restaurants that are unique to Joe. So that wraps it up for part one. So remember, we went through how to do login with or authentication with Xano and Bubble, uh, the new way of how to store an authentication token, which remember, uh, in Bubble, we went to the user's thing or database table and created a new field for auth token. We're not actually storing the users in Bubble, but rather in Xano. We're just temporarily putting in that auth token as a cookie uh, for our front end to remember. So remember, that's making changes to the current users thing that we've defined as auth token. And then we went ahead and uh, separated user data based on the data that belongs to them to show them a uh, unique list uh, of their favorite places. Uh, step two, we'll cover how to do a detailed view. So we'll actually click on one of these restaurants, show more information, and then also how to implement a logout button. So thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in part two.